Donald Trump's name is everywhere in New York City. There's the Trump International Hotel and Tower, the Trump Building at 40 Wall Street, Trump World Tower, Trump Tower, Trump Soho, Trump Park Avenue, Trump Park and Trump Park East, Trump Palace, the nursing home Trump Pavilion in Queens, and the Trump Golf Links at Ferry Point in the Bronx. Now, as Donald Trump moves into the Oval Office, all of these pinpoints have become potential targets. Take Trump Tower, the shining gold centerpiece of Trump's New York fortune. According to data from the New York City Department of Transportation, typical foot traffic on the Trump Tower section of Fifth Avenue can be as high as 9,000 pedestrians per hour. Protecting such a building has proven to be a total nightmare. scuffles outside Trump headquarters. It comes as Trump employees try to move and take signs from anti-Trump protesters. But here we go, here we go. Right now, looks like they're grabbing him. Uh, Let's just watch. Wow. All he wanted to do was meet Donald Trump. Police telling people to evacuate the lobby after reports of a suspicious backpack. The president has access to the Secret Service for his own protection, as well as for his family. But unlike the protected snow globe that is the White House, New York City is dense, and the first family's presence there requires a lot of additional security for the general public. And the NYPD, responsible for protecting these everyday New Yorkers, doesn't always have perfect communication about matters of national security. In December, a mysterious plane circled Manhattan without warning, much to the dismay of basically everyone. It turns out it was part of a military training exercise on how to rescue Trump in an emergency. The only problem was that no one told the police officers on the ground, who'd found themselves blindsided when concerned New Yorkers asked questions. If the Secret Service were to say, uh, we believe that for the cause of security, um, we need to close down Fifth Avenue, does does the Secret Service have the right to close down a street on its own? Legal right? I'm not sure. These aren't the only challenges that fall on New York's local police. Many officers are diverted from other areas of the city that desperately need them. Are uh, officers being diverted from uh, the outer boroughs? I can speak to, yes, officers are being pulled from outer boroughs. Uh, As far as the numbers, I, I cannot speak on the numbers of officers that are being pulled. Where crime is an issue in some areas, you're taking diverting officers from those areas as well. Officers are diverted from all over the city. But for the time being, the NYPD claims that those officers are only being diverted during their usual off hours. We end up with a financial hit, uh, but ultimately not a number of officers on patrol or officer hours on patrol hit. And all of that overtime comes at a cost, a big cost. It's going to essentially cost the city $500,000 per day that uh, the president chooses to reside within Trump Tower. So the mayor is asking that the city be reimbursed by the federal government. Thank you. Of course, we will be asking for up to $35 million in reimbursement for the period November 8th to January 20. But it is still unclear how much reimbursement the city will receive for any of this. And in an unprecedented move, First Lady Melania Trump has said she will not be residing in the White House, staying behind with her son Barron as he finishes school. And the logistics of keeping the high-profile first family safe are even more uncertain. Do you need more officers if it's the president? Do you need less officers if it's the first lady? Uh, I'm unable to to give you facts and figures, but what I can tell you is that we are in constant dialogue with our federal partners in providing security to the president-elect, his family, as well as the citizens of the city of New York. Okay. Well, for from our perspective, we have to pay for this. So we have to have some idea of how much this is going to cost. Because right now, we're kind of just spending with an unlimited unlimited credit, really, and hoping that maybe the federal government will pay, maybe not. And then the city's going to get the short end of the stick. And I'm sorry, we haven't been doing too great with our overtime issues, period. The Trump era has barely started, and yet the NYPD says the cost of his presidency is already beyond almost any other event in history. Election day to inauguration day 
is still looking, you know, not order of magnitude of Hurricane Sandy, but as big as anything else that we've seen in this city uh, since 9-11, this is a huge event. That is why we are going to be aggressively seeking reimbursement from the federal government. If we don't get that reimbursement, the only option we would have would be to essentially take reductions in officers on patrol across the city to handle this Which event. is absolutely unacceptable for us. Still, there are three ways Donald Trump can make this all go a lot smoother. One, Trump could take his name off of the buildings in New York. Residents at one of his towers have organized to have his name removed from the property. A rebrand couldn't hurt. And according to the Washington Post, Trump has the lowest approval rating of any incoming president in the last four decades. Two, Trump could divest himself and his family from the business, as the U.S. Office of Government Ethics has encouraged him to do. And three, Trump and his family could stay out of New York as much as possible. He only received 17% of the vote in his home city anyway. But the Trumps have made it clear that they intend to do none of these things. So the city of New York will just have to keep asking the federal government for reimbursements and hope for the best. So, welcome to Trump's America, New York. 